So it's another week. Yes. So unprofessional. Yeah. Welcome back. Yes. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. That wasn't half bad. We got a little bit of auto tune in here. I'll be better than you got. <laughs> Actually, I was thought about bringing that up. We should ask our viewers. Yeah. Everybody that's watching this show, please. <laughs> we're taking a poll. Can you name a rapper worse than you got? Hit us up on Instagram, hit us up on the Facebook, let us know. Because right now, I'm gonna be honest, I got $100 for anybody that can name a rapper worse than you got. I mean, you could throw out local rappers. No, somebody with some establishment. <laughs> but if I go to their page and the shit is dope, they're better than you got. I mean, I don't think anybody can come up with somebody worse. I don't think you can find anybody worse than you got, man. Was he signed? Who was he signed to? Who, you got? Yeah. He was, yeah, he was sounding loud. loud. Somebody paid him. Yeah, he was part of Wu-Tang. You know how white people say, oh, he's Wu-Tang, let's pay him. <laughs> nah, they do. Yeah. Culture vultures. So yeah, we got a lot of, uh, we got some topics today. You know, we gonna do what we do, preferably. Yeah. Preferably. Okay, I can go with it. Preferably. That's what you wanted me to say? This is so unprofessional, bitch. I mean, this is a preferably. Yo, you called me a, a bad name. No, I did. I called you a female dog. Female dogs are the most vicious dogs. So you're trying to say that's a compliment? Yeah, I called you a bitch. I don't think that's a compliment. Solid. Check us out, man. We also did an episode about how the world was brainwashed to think Biggie's the best rapper of all time. You should listen to that one, especially if you're young enough to where like you wasn't really old enough to remember when Biggie was out and all these other rappers was out. This will give you some insight because in 1995, Biggie wasn't my best rapper. I had Method Man over him. Yeah, yeah. If you ain't have Meth over Biggie in 95, you wasn't coming out the house, bro. Because that motherfucking Takao album was crazy, bro. Man, we I can't go to bring the pain, hardcore from the brain. Let's go inside my astral plane, find out my mental, based on Mr. Mental. Wreck it, hey, so I can write my mental method. This ain't the cream, I know the decaf, I'm staying for the cream. Check it, just how shit this shit get deep as the abyss. And niggas is mad, rip the septic. Then you get off, then you crossed over. Then I told Lee Chris out with Chris Cross. Who the boss niggas get lost in the sauce. And on the dark side of the force, the force is the method. Man of the Wu Tang clan, and I'm. Alright, my bad. Who's waiting? All right. So, first topic. The Herp Friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's about Coachella. You know. Somebody had herpes at Coachella? No, nah, it gets worse than that. All right, let's go. So, the article states, Herp Alert, a service for diagnosing and getting treatment for herpes, said in the first two days of the Coachella Music and Arts Fe Festival, uh, which are over two weekends in California, they treated 250 cases of oral and general herpes. Mm. Um, they said between April 12th and the 25th, they had 1,105 new herpes cases. Well, that's the crazy thing with that. <laughs> if, you Just, are, if you are knowledgeable about herpes, a herpes could lay dormant in a motherfucker for like six months without a fucking episode. And so we ain't going to say just because you went to Con Coachella, you contracted herpes. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because if you contract their herpes at Coachella, you wouldn't know you had herpes until about next week. So all these people came to, <laughs> they all came to Coachella with herpes. So, so that's even worse. They can't get yeah. a thousand so people. Yeah, 1,500 motherfuckers at Coachella <laughs> sucking and fucking with herpes. Glad I wasn't there. So about two weeks later, it's going to be mm -hmm. 10,000 people. <laughs> Well, if it's a 1,500 motherfuckers with herpes, and you want to assume that at least 800 of them came to fucking suck, then you're going to have about 1,600 cases of new herpes in two weeks. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, herpes, you know, herpes is like a cigarette now, man. Motherfuckers are passing herpes. <laughs> yo, brother, yo, my, yo, my man, you got an extra herpes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, my man, I get a short on your herpes. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just fucking ridiculous, man. Motherfuckers handed out herpes like motherfucking Jehovah Witness pamphlets. <laughs> Yo, have you accepted herpes in your life? <laughs> <laughs> motherfuckers knocking on your door. Boom, 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 boom. 
Have you read the Watchtower of Herpes? Yeah, this shit is crazy, man. This shit is motherfucking crazy. That's why I don't answer the door for a Jehovah Witness now. They knock on my door, doom, doom, doom. I come to the door, nigga, what? They're like, no, have a nice day, sir. Thank you. See, that's karma. I know. The one that's time, the, one time the old lady, old lady knocked on my door. She was like, excuse me, sir. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I said, I'm Muslim. She says, yes, but have you accepted Jesus Christ? I said, have you accepted that I just told you I'm a motherfucking Muslim? Why are you, why are you yelling at that nice lady? She just wants you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I mean, Jesus Christ was a cool guy. We're not going to, we're not going to talk bad about Jesus. But that's where it ends. We're not going to talk bad about him. Now get the fuck off my step. But what if I came to you? I would have slammed the door in your face. Who the fuck is this nigga? I would have thought you was a stick up nigga. I might have fucking uh, pistol whipped your me head ass. <laughs> me heads get pistol whipped, my blow spots like oh shit. <laughs> <laughs>《Final Fantasy Tonight》The ten-year-old girl, fearless, hungry for the next challenge, this is teaching very us all what it means to be America strong. Mm -hmm. Is she black? Take a good look at this handwriting. No. It just won a national award. You may not be able to tell, but it is far from average. Sort of like the little girl who penned it, Sarah Hensley, born without hands. Mm. I think it's kind of easy, like and sometimes kind of hard. Sarah, who attends St. John Regional Catholic in Frederick, Maryland, this crazy you got me watching this because you know what my hashtag is. The category. Not Things I minute. can't do, I try to figure out it, what way I could do it and try my best to make it. It's beautiful, man. Arts and crafts beautiful. to rock climbing, to rock climbing, ride a bike, ride a bike, even just messing around on the iPhone. I like to play. I like to watch TV. That's beautiful. See, man. isn't that heartwarming and yeah, beautiful? Man. <laughs> 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 stories be more heartwarming, man. <sighs> the fuck is what? <laughs> fuck is what? So apparently it was this uh, rapper. I don't know if you remember. A while ago, it went, it went viral where all the chicks was making videos of what they would do for the day. Yeah, they was all better than you got, too. <laughs> Every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently, she wasn't feeling too well. So, uh, she decided to send her kid to school. In a lift. In a lift. Okay. And didn't go with the kid. Okay. The lift driver took the kid to the police station. Said her mom sent her there. Sent the kid off without being accompanied by a parent. And now she's in trouble for child endangerment. Okay. But this is the question I ask. Shouldn't he be in trouble too because he pulled the fuck off from the resident with the kid? If it was that much, if that was that much endangerment, the child was endangered from the time you closed the door and pulled off. No, I didn't look at it that way. Yeah, so you ratting ass pussy. I hope he <laughs> go to jail too. I don't think he's gonna go to jail. I don't think she gonna go to jail neither. Probably not, but probably not good to send your kid off in a lift. Bro, nigga, we live in Philadelphia. When your kid rides the school bus and has been expelled from school, the school district has to pay to transport your child to and from school. How do they do this? Cabs, Lyft, Uber. That child is dropped off at the school by themselves. Would you be comfortable putting your kid in an Uber? First of all, I'm beating the shit out of my kid <laughs> if it ever comes down to the school district paying for my kid. Well, I don't think that was the, the issue. She wasn't feeling good. She didn't feel like taking it. Okay, but well, what I'm saying is, nigga, I could call an Uber and put 10 kilos in it and have it delivered to someone's house. And the Uber driver better not complain about shit. You getting paid for a service. Deliver this precious cargo and shut the fuck up. You didn't even pay him extra? Nigga, I paid him for the ride before he ever pulled up. But you got 10 keys in the car. I'll give him a tip when it's delivered. What does it seem right? So you're, per you're perfectly fine with this chick putting the kid in the car? Perfectly fine with it. I would put a cat in a fucking... Cat carrier in the fucking Uber. Drop this motherfucking cat off to where he belong. 
and they better do it if that's what they get paid to do. That's it. So yeah, she. I don't have a problem with it. She did the right thing. Little motherfucker can't get along on the bus. Make him ride the lift by itself. So we back. Yeah, we are. With our special guest for the evening, mm -hmm. Mr. Troy from the Field app. My nigga, my nigga. What up, though? What up, though? So I don't know. Tell tell the people what you do, man. Uh, I created an app. It's called the Field, and basically it's designed to circulate the black dollar. And uh, really circulate money amongst black businesses, black entrepreneurs, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, just kind of, you know, change the culture around. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we get a bag, and as soon as we get it, we go spend it with Gucci, mm -hmm. with this and that. And then, you know, like, why not spend it with your own? Why not make that shit with you? You want to spend on the $110 polo shirt? Well, listen, man, I, you know, I'm preparing for July 4th. Polo don't care nothing about you. Ralph Lauren can give a fuck. Uh, need to do my fucking Maurice Malone. But we spent money with his motherfucking man. Carl can I like he cared about you. Did he? You put that fucking <laughs> metal plate on the shirt. That motherfucker hurt. So tell us how the app works, man. Uh, so basically, you know, um, let's just say you was hungry, you wanted to take your lady out for something to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, you would go into restaurants and, you know, you would go into your city, Philadelphia. Yeah. And you could go down the list and um, you could just see, you know, a list of black owned restaurants mm -hmm. and, you know, you click on the link and a profile will come up and it'll come up with a map. You know, if they got some type of promotional video or something like that, mm -hmm. that'll come up too. And we also have a thing called a, a field map mm -hmm. where if you click on the map, uh, it'll basically show you, you know, any restaurants that are near in the vicinity of where you mm -hmm. at in your location I see, I see you traveling to some of these restaurants yeah uh i try to practice what i preach you know i try to spend my money you know in the black community and mm -hmm. you know i just opened up um a bank account with the uh at the uh the harbor bank of maryland mm -hmm. and um you know i'm just trying to keep my money circulating within the community man understood with black businesses yeah understood so let me ask you this what's that like, I'm be honest, and I don't want to sound like I'm uh, against the culture, because I'm definitely born in the culture. But like I said before, like, I don't care if you black, white, or Asian, or any color. If you sell some bullshit, I'm not buying it. So if, if a black person makes some bullshit, I'm not buying it. That's understood. You know what I'm saying? I know previously, like, you asked me, like, what make it bullshit? Like, motherfucking Raheem from up the block make a t-shirt, and that shit ass, I'm not buying it. But if Raheem up the block make a t-shirt and it's dope, I buy three of them. You know what I'm saying? That's understandable. I, I mean, of course. Yeah. So like, I don't want to be. I don't, like. I don't know. Like, if you preaching like pro black and keeping the dollar with the black business, regardless of what the product is and how the and the quality of the product, because I don't want to confuse like pro black with just buying anything. You know what I'm saying? Because like a motherfucker be like, oh, if you don't support this black rapper, you a hater. Nah, if this motherfucker is ass. <laughs> yeah, of course. You feel I me? Mean, <laughs> but, you know, it's such a wide variety of black owned businesses yeah. that. You'll find an alternative. You will find an alternative. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, well, uh, it's only one motherfucker making t shirts, or it's mm -hmm. only one person that makes shoes, or yeah. it's only. One of my person that makes jeans, like yeah. you know, it's 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 different varieties, and that's yeah. kind of what I wanted to highlight. Is like, you know, it's not just Starbucks. You could go to Uncle Bobby's. You could go to yeah, Malcolm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's different. There's alternatives to everything. Mm -hmm. So you know, with my app, I just wanted to highlight the alternative, and that's yeah. you know, spending your money in the you know in the black community. Yeah. We got corner stores, we got delis, groceries, mm -hmm. all of that, and so you know, people were so quick to. Blame other people, oh, the white man, this and that, this and that, and the third, but, you know, what are you doing with your money? Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's that's where it starts, in my yeah. opinion, is like, if you're not a part of the solution, you're a part of the problem, sure in indeed. my opinion. Sure indeed, sure indeed. So, you know, if you you get $1,000 every week and you only getting a platter from country cooking and that's it, that's the only money you're spending in the black community, then you can't complain about shit. But I disagree with that because if I get $1,000 a week and mm -hmm. I went and spent 30 of my thousand dollars with country cooking. I've supported a black business that gives back to the community. Like how much of my money or, of, or, or a black person's money 
are you expecting to spin back into the, to spin back into the community, especially yeah. when some of the better quality things you need in this world? You know what I'm saying? I hate to say it, but like the other races make it. And then on top of that, with black people being somewhat of the minority in America, mm -hmm. when we definitely the uh, the minority as entrepreneurs, I won't say it's difficult to spend your money with all black people, but at some point in time, you're going to take a couple of dollars outside of the black community. Of course. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, every penny, but mm -hmm. $30 out of a thousand, you could do better than that. You know what I mean? Like, and it's just like, you know, you could, you could order some toilet paper, you know, Freedom Toilet Paper Company, you know, some, some dish detergent, mm -hmm. some uh, clothing, what you call it, laundry detergent, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there's different ways that you can invest your money back into the community. But can you coupon with them? Because I know my lady motherfucking. I mean, she pay said, how you weigh. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's how I was brought up. If you ain't got it, you ain't got it. Balling and bitching about coupons. Right, that's I mean, what I'm saying. If you ain't got it, you ain't got it. You can coupon. That's what I'm saying. Let's just be all way honest. Like, yeah. I don't know about nobody else. Like, my lady is like the motherfucking Michael Jordan of couponing. And so she'll go into one of these white. You ain't even no fabrics offer yet. You ain't all, you ain't come with no money to buy nothing. Like, <laughs> like, like business. Yeah. So, and, you know what I'm saying? She's like Michael Jordan a coupon, and then she'll go out here and spend like five dollars and come home with like a shitload of shit for the house that lasts us for years. And so the question is like, man, hey, what's your support? You just you just took, took away half they stock for five dollars. Don't support black people with that bullshit. Huh? Huh? You try to get 30, 30 rolls of toilet paper for five dollars. Yes. That black camp company can't give you thirty rolls of toilet paper for five dollars. Well. <laughs> well, I mean, and, but and I want to be clear, I'm registered with your app. I appreciate that. You understand what I'm saying? And I mean, I eat at relish when I can. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Uncle Bobby's my fraternity brother runs Uncle Bobby, so of course. If I'm on that side of town, I support it. I mean, I live in West Philly. I'm not gonna drive 20 miles just for coffee and, of and not. chicken. Good sandwich. coffee, man. I mean, I don't drink coffee to begin and with. And a panini. They don't have paninis there. Uh, you never been to Uncle Bobby's. <laughs> yes, I have. They got the, the sandwiches with the press. Don't they have? No, them sandwiches be already in the cold aisle. You just asking to get them heated up. See, you don't know shit. It's like a roasted turkey sandwich, it's like a chicken sandwich, and then it's like a veggie sandwich there. You know, show I'm, off and shit. I'm not showing off. I'm just stating facts. I've been on Kabbalah. I support my brother. You know what I'm saying? You just shut the fuck up. You live in. I had a coffee. You live I in a fucking. From you fucking live in a cola sack in South White Jersey. Don't talk about supporting black people. Don't talk about my. Don't talk about my cola sack. This is a nice cola sack. It is. I've been there. I smoked black and miles in front of white people that were appalled. <laughs> oh my God! This nigga is smoking outside. I'm out. You was ruining my, my impression of my neighbors. I'm like, you got niggers out front smoking. Yeah. Nah, I mean, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Can, no, I mean, what can you do, you know? What can you do? But uh, and I was actually down in Baltimore last week, and I was mm -hmm. sitting with these uh, two young ladies. They own the Dove Code Cafe, mm -hmm. and they were talking about a project they got going on down there where, you know, that whole square down there in their neighborhood, they were trying to get 100 black people to buy houses so they can actually, you know, they're starting to fix up things and, you know, putting a grocery store and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, these are things that people can do to actually, mm -hmm. you know, make a difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, yeah. there are things that can be done, but, yeah. you know, if all you're doing is just complaining and, you Bitch. know, making Facebook posts and doing yeah. this and the third and you're not actually getting out there and trying to make a difference, then... Yo, no revolution was ever started with just bitching. You know what I mean? You got to be bitching, but moving forward. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. I dig it. I understand. I think it is something good that you're attempting to do. And just hopefully, like, because my generation, a lot of us are just stuck in our fucking ways. You know what I'm saying? We grew up Tommy Hill ice rocking niggas. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, we still rock Tommy Hill and rock ice and all that other shit. You know what I mean? Hopefully, so, something about that horse, man. They the brainwashers. Yeah, and that fucking red, white, and blue symbol. Uh, Tommy Hill fell off for a while. I don't mm -hmm. like the way they treated Nautica, though. I mean, Nautica just copying Tommy Hill, but that's not the fucking point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The point is, I just hope that the younger generation catch on to what you and many others is trying to do. I think it's a positive movement. I mean, you know, if, if somebody started some initiative like that, like, you know, this one section in Philadelphia or 
this one section here. We're trying to get all black people to buy this, buy these houses and live in this section. And we're gonna put black businesses in this section and strengthen the, the voice of this section through keeping the money all funneled through this section. I mean, that'll be love. I, I would like to be a part of something like that. Shit, I looked up some of the prices of the houses in West Philly. They trip. What part of West Philly? Your part of West Philly. Oh, well, you know, my part of West Philly has been designated as Carroll Park. So, yeah, the price of the houses cost a lot to live Those in Carroll Park. Three story houses going for like almost three. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Where? Uh, Out west? Mm. Yeah, like off of Gerard, that whole area over like 56 of the 60th. Going all the way over to oh, like yeah, they uh, 200, from 250. Like down, all the way over to like Haverford. Yeah. Oh, they coming. Yeah. They definitely coming. They definitely Oh, yeah, they coming. So, you know, I was, uh, I had been out of town for a while. So, you know, when I came back, I was walking down 52nd Street and I'm seeing white people in the deuce now. And it was like. Oh, jogging and shit with their dogs. Walking and dogs and <laughs> pushing strollers. And it was like. Fuck with them if you, you want. You know what it is, though? Right. That's because we don't knock those white people to fuck. I was going to say, they look real comfortable <laughs> doing it, too. They look real comfortable doing it. And it's like, you know, I'm right. not on no race and shit or nothing yeah. like that. But, you know, like back in the day, 100 years ago, if they would have caught us yeah, in one of their neighborhoods. 100 months ago, they would have got knocked the fuck out on 52nd Street. Hey, man. I just want to keep this real. Like, I know this is a bad thing to, like, big up about my hometown and my home neighborhood but i'll say this in north new jersey if you're a white man jogging up clinton avenue near chadwick and like seymour and all that you're fucking done <laughs> like, like i hate to put it like man. if you're a black man and don't nobody know you and you jogging up clinton avenue you're fucking done so a white man you could just forget about it. especially they come out with all them funny looking shorts and them gay ass dogs like like a lassie dog or a fucking Shih Tzu or a Schnauzer. Somebody knocking you the fuck out, bro. Like this oh, shit. You can't have a Schnauzer. Somebody knocking you the fuck out. <laughs> and don't let nobody have a bigger dog out there and they gonna sick their dog on your dog and right. knock you the Big fuck out. Pit. Yeah. And rob you. Yeah. I mean, well, change is coming. I don't want that change to come. I'm sorry. I'm not racist, but I don't want that change to come. I am a, a advocate of segregation. I'm an advocate of the worst thing that ever happened to the black dollar and black people is that we decided that, that we wanted to push the issue of intermingling. Like, how good would our colleges be if Michael Jordan was forced to play for Howard? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So, with that being said, why do you integrate your money? I integrate my money because this is the devil's plateau and at times you just gotta dance with the devil because we're in his hometown you understand what I'm saying like I got I gotta just all the way be honest like there's no all-black car company so I'm going do you tell me a, a black person that started their own car company Not American like, yeah that's shipped in from you, South you feel Africa. what I'm saying and so I'm almost forced to spend my money with white people for cars you understand what I'm saying? And then let's just say, for whatever reason, you own a luxury car. You could just be out. Huh? That's always an option too, man. What? The motherland waiting. I mean, the motherland is waiting. That's but, always an option. But as much as we complain about America, the freedoms that we have in America just don't rock in other countries. How do you know that? What, what countries in Africa have you been to? I mean, I haven't been to any of them, but one thing that Africans say when they come here, like it's more beautiful in Africa but America is less stringent on certain things than what Africa is. Like, you know, where I work, one of my coworkers is like Nigerian and he'd be like, listen, you know, America gives a little bit more freedoms to people than what we get back in Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? It's a reason why a lot of these people that at times don't agree with the way their, their countries is run, the way their cities is run, the way their hometowns is, is run, have no problem grooming a child and having the money up to send this child to America and make a life for America and then bring them over here. You understand what I'm saying? And so, yeah, America treat black people like shit. They treat a lot of minorities like shit. But just off this capitalist program that's here, a motherfucker could take a dollar in a dream, the opportunity to take a dollar in a dream and, and set their life up for the rest of their life if, if the grind is right. But what if you took, and this is just, you know, me, 
Mm -hmm. You know, make him pro black. Of course. What if you took that that dollar in a dream mm -hmm. and you would have invested in a into a, like a Haiti or into like a you know into a, a Ghana or a Liberia, you know, a country, Senegal, something like mm -hmm. that, where you would probably get a lot more for your money. Um, I think for me, and it's just being all way honest, because I, I am a part of the disenfranchised uh, tribe of Shabazz, people that was brought here to America. Um, I mean, I hate to say it as poisonous as it sounds, like a lot of us was more raised to be loyal to our neighborhoods and be no, more loyal to where we at than to be loyal to anything else in our heritage. And I, I mean, I'm a victim of that. Will I pick up and take my money and spend it in Africa? I'm sorry. I got family over here that I would much rather see be prosperous and better before I take my money and invest it over into Africa. I mean, I think it also you know what is, is what you're comfortable with. Yeah. I mean, as much as we love our heritage and where we origin, originally came from, this is what we know. Yep. You know what I mean? So, but what do we know? Like, we know that We've been getting fucked over for 400 years. We know that we keep trying the same shit and don't nothing else work. We know that we keep turning the other cheek and turning the other cheek and turning the other cheek. That's all we know. So it's like, at what point do you say, okay, well, we know this shit ain't working out. Let's really try something different. Because, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, you know, we're the minority here. So this black skin is is gonna make you the minority. So when yep. you get pulled over, that's a serious conversation you gotta have with your kids. Yeah. Like a serious conversation that your yeah. white coworker ain't gotta have. Yeah. Your Asian coworker ain't gotta have. But, but when you go over to Africa as an American, you still run the risk of your own people thinking that they, you have more than them because you're an American robbing you or doing some dangerous shit to you over there as well. You got the same shit on 50. You could walk anywhere in West yeah. Philly, North and, Philly. You could so, get the same and, thing. And so, and so, in my opinion. so understand this. Mm -hmm. When I go to Africa, you can't read those people the way you can read 52nd Street. You walk up and down 52nd Street from a block away, you could read this could be a situation that's potentially dangerous. These niggas is weird. These niggas, I had beef with these niggas a while ago. This shit might go crazy. You are familiar with this environment. You walking up and up and down the street, Africa. You don't know who a stick up boy, who's the motherfucking people that's just welcoming the black Americans. You don't understand that this is the environment. You know, it's a comfortability and a familiarity with America compared to that in Africa. It's good to visit. You know it's what I'm saying? The devil, you know. It's the yeah, I mean, you <laughs> gonna take you, you know. go, you always gonna take your chances with the lesser of two evils. And as much as it sounds to be oppressed and everything here, we know this. And even and even throughout the oppression here, I mean, it's like it's, it's almost like a, a game of monopoly. You gotta know how to move, and you move, and you get through some shit that other people don't get through, and you try to pull some people up, you try to do business with some people, whatever the case may be, and you and you try to make a way to survive and pass it down to your to your kids. I mean, move to me. It's just like moving to Africa without being familiar with Africa, wherever I'm going, and not being familiar with. Excuse me, whatever's going on over there with the politics and everything like that. I, I feel like I would be setting myself up more for failure moving to Africa than whatever risks I'm taking here. Have you uh, have you heard of the um, the year to return campaign? Mm -mm. En enlighten me. I've heard of uh, Ghana. Mm -hmm. And but basically with the, uh, you know, prime minister, the president, whatever you want to call him, he uh, was basically talking about how you know, this is the 400 year anniversary of us being, you know, mm -hmm. over here, whatever. And uh, they were basically calling it the year to return where they're making it, you know, easy for black Americans to come get their visas, come check it out, you know, see what's going on. It's a lot of people who are going over there and not coming back. I mean, I'll be honest, I mean, they doing it like that. I, I wouldn't mind taking a flight over there and see what it look like. And, and I mean, if it's inviting and you, they create a neighborhoods that will that's that's gonna allow us to uh acclimate to the to the environment well and you know things is over there can be somewhat comparable to what we was living in in america you know what i'm saying i, I mean, think <laughs> some real shit things might be better 
You know, and that's mm-hmm. that's that's what you know. When you see Africa, what do you think of? You think of mud huts, and you think of I don't know what you think of. That's but, not what I think of. When I think of Af- Africa, man, what do you I, think th- of? I personally like honestly, as much as I've never been there, anything. When I think of Africa, I think of home. I think of a home that I've never saw, a home that I've never learned about, and well, not learned about because I learned about it, but never saw, never set foot on. You know what I mean? And probably won't ever get a chance to set foot on it before my life is over. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's just the birthplace of everything that means anything to the world. And so, uh, you know, I could never, I'm going to always give my reverence and respect to Africa. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I think it's just, I think it's a big leap and a big investment to move over there. And then when you, you do all that to move over there and, and it's not what you were looking for and it's, and it's not going to turn into what you're looking for, you could have kept your black ass in America. I mean... Plus, you got you to gotta realize, you know, people get stuck in their ways and what they know. And it's hard to change, you know what I mean? Especially once you, you, know, you, once, once you get a certain age. Yeah. Especially, like, if you're in America, you know how to get money here. You yeah. know what I mean? You might not know how to get money over there, how the mm-hmm. economy is, what you got to do, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? With, you know, you know I've, I've looked up, the, you know, done research on moving back to Africa. The economy's different. So, you, and, you know, and the food that you eat is different. Yeah. So, it's not only... It's better. It's better for you. It's oh, real yeah. food. But, you know... Shit we eat is... is you got to pay more for them motherfuckers not to poison you here. You know well, what I'm I saying? That, like, but the thing about it is... The organic You and have all to of that. adapt to... It's you. You're making African wages, so yep. you gotta think about it. It's like a lot of times people go over to go back when they retire or when they're mm-hmm. financially stable. Mm-hmm. But if you're still, you know, working on your career and stuff mm-hmm. like that, you gotta realize you're going over there and you're making African money. Yeah. African you're, money ain't yeah. like American money. You know, it, it depends on what you do too. But you know what I mean. Like it, it is. So the question is, can you afford to live the way you live in America if you go over there, or do I have to live differently? live below what I'm used to now, you know? I mean, it's whether you, you want to do it or not, you know? Yeah. I mean, I got yeah. a friend, you know, she says she pays her maid uh, $30 a month, mm-hmm. you know, that she has a maid that cleans her house over there in Cameroon. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she said it's, America is like, you, you would think that America was like, I don't know, you just get different perspectives from different people. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You got mm-hmm. friends who say, well, look, I'm going to come over here and this. But she's like, yo, I get over here. This, the food is disgusting. You know, I mean, it, it's cold over here. Shit is just, she want to go. So it's different people, different strokes with different folks. Mm-hmm. Like but I'm not saying, you know, just jump out there, move mm-hmm. your whole family yeah. out there without ever going out there to visit. I'm just mm-hmm. saying, leave the option open. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, the option is always open. I, I mean, I personally... I don't know what it's like to live in Egypt, but I would like to live in Egypt. I would like to see that. I would like I would like to live there. I would like to one day walk on those hollow grounds. To me, those is hollow grounds. You know what I'm saying? The greatest empire ever in this world was, was created by us, and it's been mimicked two, three times over. But it all started there. I would like to walk on those grounds. It's because there's nobody, you know, protecting it. What if you went and tried to dig up George Washington? You know what I'm saying? And tried to put him in a in a museum that you make up. They'd be like, you crazy. No, you can't dig him up. Mm-hmm. They over there digging up everybody and putting him in music. Like, that's, mm-hmm. to me, that's disrespectful to the ancestors. It right? is. It is. But then also, our ancestors, I won't say they was vain, but they thought so worldly that it was like, yeah, this was a great man. We're going to bury them in a monument that we will always be able to come in and give worship to him. And then somebody went into that monument and said, I'm taking this body and putting it somewhere where it will be reserved, preserved and the whole world could see it. I mean, it's, it, it can be viewed as disrespect because and you should be made to go to Africa and walk on those grounds to see those, those uh, artifacts. But in the same token, if you're here in America and you could go in there and pay twenty dollars to go see it instead of paying a twelve hundred dollar flight and room and board, and the trip comes out to about three thousand dollars to go to Africa. I mean, just thinking as from a capitalist mind state that we were raised in, it makes more sense to just go to the Smithsonian and see it. See the stolen. <laughs> see the stolen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, man. I'm not perfect. I'm not yeah. saying that you know. 
I'm perfect and I spend every single penny in the black yeah. community. Of course, that's not realistic. You know yeah. what I mean? But I'm just saying, try to make the effort. You yeah. know what I mean? You, you and, ever and, seen? And, and, oh man. No, go ahead. You ever seen the the, uh, the the thing that Killer Mike did on Netflix, where he said, uh, I think it was like the anniversary or something, for a week, he was going to only spend money with black business, and he was in Atlanta. And he was traveling from Atlanta, from Atlanta to another city in Georgia where he had a show. There was no black rental car spaces, so he had to purchase a bike and ride his bike there. There was no black owned hotels. He had to sleep outside. It's a uh, it's a black Airbnb app I got in my uh, in my app. That's what's uh, up. He should have had that. He should have had that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was <laughs> up and running. I've been up since <laughs> August, you know so I mean? you know, like I've been up yeah. and running. So I think I think if you got an Instagram for the page. Maybe you want to at Killer Mike. I think that's something that if he see it and he has time out his day to look at it and look at what you're doing, that might be something that he big up because, you know, he had to sleep outside in every city that he went because there was no black hotels. Um, he wanted to smoke weed. He went through. You going to find one, one black person with weed? No, he couldn't find, like, <laughs> one black a farmer or something like that, like, yeah. Dutches or, 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 you know what I'm saying? He couldn't spend that money like that. Like that. So he went a week without weed. Um, he tried to spend his money in black businesses for food. It took for him to get, like, almost to his destination to find, like, a, 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 a black lady who was, like, a caterer that was selling food out of her house that he went into the house and I was, was able to say, eat. You know, I got at any black barbershop. I, I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, it's not as bad as I feel like he made it look, you know, because it's a couple of black farms down there. If he mm -hmm. really wanted to go. Well, from where he, the way he was traveling. I'm not, he, and I'm no disrespect to yeah. him and nothing he had going yeah. on, but it's a couple of black farms down there. You know, it's black yeah. markets. It's, it's all like kinds of things. It's like a nation of Islam so, farm down there. Yeah, it, it's, it's ways that you can eat. And, you know, it's. I feel like we aren't, Doing as bad as people think we are, we just don't no, support each other. I think, I think, I think it's a it's a non-support thing, and then it's just an ignorance thing to where people have been so conditioned to spend their money here and there that they're not informed of these other black businesses. You understand what I'm saying? And so I think things that you're doing and things that Killer Mike is doing and other people trying to do to get the word out about the black businesses is a good thing. But I think maybe it need to be like some guerrilla tactics about it to where you like you really going hard. To promote this stuff so that the people know, you know what I'm saying? Because if the people know, don't know, they can't spend their money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got. Uh, I got. I got a couple things lined up. Mm -hmm. I'm. A, uh, it's not an LLC. It's a stock corporation. So I got a few plans. Uh, I'm gonna start selling shares <laughs> pretty soon, mm -hmm. so people can invest. Into well, let the me know. I'm gonna buy some shares too. All right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I got that coming up within the next few weeks. To be honest, so. Uh, yeah, keep me keep me posted. Look out for that. And we, got some, we got some big plans. Like I said, I'm not just a talker, man. You know, I like to. If I see a problem, I like to try to fix it. You know yeah. what I mean? I, mm -hmm. You know, go down trying. So that's it. Make sure the people know where they can catch you on Instagram, mm -hmm. your website, your, um, where they can download the app. Yeah, y'all yeah, can download the app. I'm in the Apple Store under the Field. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the Play Google Play Store, the Field, and I'm on Instagram at the Field app. Um, other than that, my website is thefieldappinc.com. Mm -hmm. And you can read a little bit more about us and uh, check us out. Yeah, man. The, free the, to download. The field. Yeah, that's it, man. And you know, I'm trying to start a new way. That's all. Make it cool to spend your money in the black community. All right, thanks, man. Thank Peace. You for having me. <laughs> so, y'all make sure y'all follow my man on his Instagram. Y'all make sure y'all go and download the field app. You know what I'm saying? No do, excuses. No excuses. Black, black businesses. That's it. Do your best. To know some black business. I'm sorry. I mean to cut you off. Y'all know some black businesses. You meant to cut I did, but if you uh, if you know some black businesses, tag them. Uh, you can shoot them to my DM or shoot me an email, whatever you want to do. But we trying to build in every city, so if you know anybody, shoot them to me and we gonna review them and throw them up. That's it. Well, everybody, we see y'all next episode. Peace. Peace.